Should you put your HSA in your trust? My name is Amanda Rocha. I am an estate planning and probate attorney in California. And before I give you my thoughts on this, I want to give you my contact information so you can find me with any questions or we can work together. You can find me on my website. I'm at www.amandarochalaw.com. You can comment down below if this platform allows you to do that or follow along on my social media. I am at Amanda Rocha Law. So you have an HSA, health healthcare or health savings account, and you're not really sure what to do with it when you're dealing with your estate plan as a total, right? It does have a beneficiary section listed, but you just wanna make sure that that money isn't just sitting there, or if you have a substantial amount in that account, that that money does not trigger probate for your family. What are you supposed to do? First of all, if you aren't sure what an HSA is, <laughs> then you probably don't need to know this information. <laughs> if you're thinking about getting an HSA and you're wondering what's gonna happen to it, this is a great video. Or if you already have one, maybe you haven't even thought about this. I'm hoping that this is helpful for someone. So a healthcare savings account or health savings account is basically pre-taxed money that comes out of your paycheck and goes directly into this account so that you can use it on specific healthcare needs. It could be a variety of different things. Sometimes it's copay, sometimes it's medications or you know, other health pre-approved healthcare spending. It is pre-tax, like I mentioned, so that's the benefit of having that. It's not like it's coming out of your income and then going directly into your checking account and or savings account and then being spent. When you pass this along to someone, however, it may no it may not be pre-tax money anymore. So the rule is you can pass this off to your spouse as a beneficiary and they can continue using it in the same way if you pass away and they will not have to claim that as income that however much it is. Anybody other than your spouse, that rule doesn't apply. So um, the first thing to know is that you can't really avoid that if you don't have a spouse. The second thing is your trust, your revocable living trust or otherwise cannot be the owner of this account. Only you can be the owner. However, you get beneficiaries to list. You can name your trust as a beneficiary. And for some people that might be a good idea and some people it might not be. And I'm gonna get a little into that. So first of all, if you have a spouse, you should list them as your first beneficiary if you want them to receive the funds. That way the taxes are not going to be, um, you know, they won't have to claim that amount as income on their taxes. And then you can name your trust as the backup so that if something were to happen to your spouse before something happened to you, then your trust will determine who the beneficiaries are for that amount of money. Um, and if something were to happen to both of you at the same time, same situation. Now, if you don't have a spouse, if you have children and they are adults, you could name them as the beneficiaries and then your trust as the backup. If you don't have children that are adults, then naming your trust as a beneficiary is a great idea because then your trustee will be able to handle those funds on your children's behalf until they reach whatever age you deem appropriate for them to receive an outright distribution. Um, and it won't go to whoever their guardian is if something were to happen to you while they are still minors. Um, now, all that being said, if the beneficiary is not your spouse, they're going to have to claim the amount that they receive from this account specifically as income for that year. And it will be taxed at whatever the rate is at that period in time. That shouldn't be a reason for you not to leave them something and it shouldn't be a reason for you uh, not to have an account like this because it is beneficial while you are alive. If you have questions about this or anything else estate planning related and you're in California or probate related and it's in California, please feel free to reach out to me. You can find me on my website at www.amandarochalaw.com. You can comment down below if this platform allows you to do so or follow along on my social media and send a message there. I'm at Amanda Rocha Law. Thank you.